Hi everybody, I'm Justin Boos and I'm here to show you the Artisan Erasers Brush Pack for Painter Essentials. In this brush pack there are 10 erasers. Um, typically there are 15 if you have the full version of Painter or you have Particle Shop. And I'm going to show you all 10 of them on what I have here in front of me. There's some smeared graphite that I smeared on a piece of of textured paper at home and I took a picture of and kind of docked it up here so there's some nice depth between the uh, grays and, and the black blacks here so we could kind of look at these erasers. Um, these erasers are for effect. Uh, typically Painter comes with or your software comes with the basic um, e erasers that you might need in a typical illustration. Um, I love that Painter has a lot of textured and nice variations of what you might need or uh, like as an eraser but with this artisan erasers uh, what we're looking at here is we're looking at things to um, kind of take those flat pieces of color that you might have in your digital illustration uh, I know I have many of them in my coloring layers and um, kind of break those up a little bit to add some texture so this is kind of like if you've ever taken a needle eraser and just kind of went over some uh, bolder areas of your artwork that you kind of wanted to back out of. This is this is kind of for a rendition of that um, that you can do while adding effect and uh, a pro look to your image. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. This is Boca and we all are familiar with that. It's very popular in photography and imagery right now. Um, has been for a while I think and as you can see when I make a stroke it's just kind of a nice uh, it's kind of a nice back out. Um, be mindful of what your canvas might be. If you have something on a layer like this, and let's say my, my canvas was blue, if I'm using an eraser, it's going to go through that blue. So you can get creative with that, but also be mindful so you don't mess things up if you intend to use these in an illustration. Um, or you can recolor your canvas. I actually simply color picked from this uh, right up here, at one of the bright spots, and I, I filled the canvas layer so that this would work out well. So uh, we saw what what Boca looks like, and you can make those small, you can make them big, of course. And let's go to the next brush here. This is Echo. I really enjoy this brush here, and I like these multi-line kind of strokes. When I press hard, it adds this nice wispy spinning effect. Uh, what I recommend you do with all of these brushes, in fact, is play with the opacity. This is kind of a bold statement, but if this were my il illustration over here to the side, and I were to tap this down to 20% opacity, I did that using my keyboard, using the number 2, I can add some really cool effects going on here. And you can kind of see how that might benefit uh, desired parts of your illustration that you might want that kind of effect in. So let's go ahead to the next one. Uh, we went over that as well and electricity is a, a really good example of this because if I have electricity on at 100% it's a pretty bold statement um, and unless that you are looking for that in your illustration and that's what it's called for. Uh, again if, if you play with that opacity instead and go down to something like 30% uh, or even 10% you're going to get some, some much more subtle uh, results in your imagery. Let's go to floaters. This one is, is tiny and subtle, and just if you don't want to go crazy with something, but you want to add these little, you see these little strings of dots everywhere, um, I'm just going back and forth with my pen right now, and it kind of helps you to choose exactly how much and not like lay down a stroke and go, whoa, I didn't mean that. Um, just a nice, subtle, you can see that's a difference. Let's back out of it and see, see how that would work, especially if this were flat color. You see all this texture here, but... Again, typically in a digital illustration, you're going to get a lot of that um, that flat, undeathful look. So let's go to Leaky here, and this one is also bold. And um, if I go to 100%, it's really bold. This is let's go 100%, and then this is like 10%. So you can see there's a little bit of variation there. Um, this just kind of adds some leaky parts to your work, and you can get creative with it. And there's some nice, especially when you're down in the lower opacity, there's some nice variation between opacity. Let's go to the next one. Noise. I really wish I made this brush a long time ago because I love adding noise to my artwork. 
I've had a lot of people ask me what it is that I do to make my simple line work and color look organic and the answer has always been I just add a little bit of noise it just kind of helps with that you've probably done that in Photoshop before but this is kind of a way you can do that specifically and this is even 100% I tried to make this brush subtle because noise doesn't look too good if it's you know it just kind of looks like a, a broken TV if you don't do it right but you can back out of layers with this creatively and, and add um, more more you know usually when I add noise oh excuse that uh, usually when I add noise to an image it's really just all one variation of it but this way if, if I want to add noise on one layer like that and another layer I want to go down to 10% and add less of it um, it kind of gives me more control and depth and I'm kind of excited to use that one in my own work uh, since I use noise so much let's look at rice I kind of had this idea from um, Either do I, I can't remember if this is either doing this in preschool or just thinking about it. Um, I don't fully remember, but I have always been kind of fascinated with putting rice on paper and then putting paint over it and then rolling the rice off. And I don't know. Do people do that? I don't know. Maybe they do it with watercolors for texture. Uh, salt. Not, yeah, salt, I guess, in a way. Um, I, I'm, I've done so much digital work that I'm kind of a traditional uh, I'm not very smart at that stuff <laughs> um, but this kind of has that kind of cool effect like you kind of put some rice on there and then kind of rolled it off when everything dried um, kind of neat and you can you can make it pretty big too big rice you know <laughs> let's see here um, we can go to sandy this one's fun if you have a tiltable Wacom pen this one comes out the tip of your pen and it's tilt sensitive this is on a 30 percent opacity right now you can be pretty bold with it 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 pressure sensitive in a way that if you are bold with it you can still be subtle if you press hard you, you might want to take it down a little bit to get some more bolder but also subtle strokes kind of play back and forth you can see all the different varieties here and this you you can kind of see that if you play with the opacity of something you're also playing with the sharpness so you don't want to make something so sharp like I did over here that you're also taking away from your own image so it, again the opacity thing I highly recommend that you play with that sometimes I honestly forget about opacity I just like lines um, so I feel like I gotta say it a bunch of times let's see here sculpt this one is fun but again Opacity comes into play. This is at 20% right now. If I was to play this at 100%, um, it's got a cool multi-line, but it's you're you're kind of probably digging in too deep. I kind of thought of this as taking like a a text like a like a jagged edge of something, like a spoon of some kind, uh, a spork maybe, and scooping out part of your picture. And again, the lower the opacity, the more subtle that's going to be. Uh, let's go to stretch and this one's really fun especially if you have that lower opacity um, this is on 10% right now and you can kind of go throughout your picture the smaller it is the more it's, it's not very expressive so I recommend you put this one up to like a maximum size or something like that that you can really play with you can see how as as I play with these lines crossing over each other um, it creates some cool stuff uh, so that is all 10 brushes. Let's make sure. Yep, that is all 10 brushes for the Artisan Erasers brush pack for Painter Essentials. I'm really excited to use these myself in my work, especially under my line work where the colors are. And I hope that you create some cool textures and pro looks to your works and your prints um, that help you to be ready to sell them in a heartbeat when somebody sees them and they have no idea what you did and it was actually a secret eraser trick. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I uh, look forward to seeing what you guys make around the internet. Thank you so much.